the law of combining volumes. So what scientists discovered was that when gases react, the volumes of gaseous reactants and products, remember a, a reaction has reactants and products, so the volumes of these at the same temperature and pressure conditions are in whole number ratios, i.e. the volume of one entity can be determined by using the mole ratio or just generally a mathematical ratio um, because we haven't yet looked at stoichiometry. I'll show you both methods though um, so you can decide what you're most comfortable with. So how they found this, um, I thought I'd kind of summarize because it's a little confusing from our textbook, um, is that scientists uh, were um, experimenting with how much gas they needed to react. So they found that if they reacted 100 milliliters of hydrogen gas and 50 milliliters of oxygen gas on the nose, perfect measurements, they would get exactly 100 milliliters of water. So then they reacted 50 milliliters and we needed exactly 25 milliliters to make exactly 50 milliliters. They couldn't understand these ratios based on the molar mass of the compounds. So I went ahead and calculated the molar mass of hydrogen. Remember hydrogen is H2, oxygen is O2, and water is H2O. Oh, and sorry, it was a gas. We're looking at gas laws here. Okay. So the molar mass of hydrogen gas is 2.02 grams per mole. Oxygen is 32 grams per mole. And water vapor is 18.02 grams per mole. So a generalized um, kind of ratio here, we would get approximately, we can bring this down to a ratio of 1 to about 16 to about two. Okay, now these are, are like approximations, of course. All right, so um, one to 16 to two does not have the same ratio. Again, those were from molar masses. Does not have the same ratio as our volumes did. Our volumes had a ratio of two to one to two. So totally different than this ratio. Therefore, the ratio of volumes cannot be based on molar mass. So they were like, what is going on here? And they did a little bit more science and they figured some things out. They decided that it had to do with the balanced chemical equation. Remember, our volumes were 100 to 50 to 100 and 50 to 25 to 50. Okay, if we look at our coefficients here, this is a two to one, remember no coefficient means one to two. All right, again, no coefficient means there's only one. Now remember our ratio for our volumes was two to one to two. Because these match, they were like, hey, the volumes required to react or the volumes of gases produced are based on the ratio found from our balanced chemical equation. So let's put this into practice with an example here. I missed typing out an example here. It asked if the students, or sorry, scientists had used 75 milliliters of hydrogen. What volume of oxygen would be required? And what volume of water vapor is produced? So um, this was when we are making water vapor. And so we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas reacting to make water as a vapor. Our coefficients are two to one to two. Therefore, all right, so we were given 75 milliliters of hydrogen and really we're being asked for both pieces of information here. So using ratios, we need to divide by two 
to get to, from hydrogen to oxygen. So dividing 75 by 2, um, we are going to get uh, 37.5 milliliters. Then to find uh, water vapor, we either need to multiply by 2 or realize that it's the exact same value here. So we should have 75 milliliters. Now, how would we do this with a mole ratio? Again, our mole ratio, we're going to start with that same balanced chemical equation. So two hydrogens and oxygen makes two water vapor. So we're going to start with our 75. We had 75 milliliters of hydrogen and I'm going to solve for oxygen, let's say. So I'm going to take my 75 milliliters and that was specifically for hydrogen. Now, if I'm going to multiply by a ratio, it's going to be a fraction and I need to cancel hydrogen. So hydrogen's information is going to go in the denominator and I am looking for oxygen. So oxygen's information goes in the numerator. If I do this, again, I've canceled hydrogen and the only uh, compound I'm talking about now is oxygen. It's the only thing left. What I put in here has to be my coefficients because that's what determines um, these ratios, remember, from above. So I start with two molecules of hydrogen and I need one molecule of oxygen. So I multiply 75 by one and divide by two, aka I just divide it by two, which is exactly what we did up here. It just looks more convoluted. Um, it is actually a, a better way to show our math and we use it a lot in stoichiometry. And by a lot, I mean in every question, this ratio. Okay, so we get the same answer, 37.5 milliliters, and this was specifically of oxygen. Now, if I wanna do the same thing, but for water vapor, I'm gonna start with my same piece of information. I'm gonna start with my 75 milliliters of hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas needs to be canceled, so it's gonna go in the denominator, and what I'm looking for this time was water vapor. The information I'm gonna use here is that two molecules, oopsie, two molecules of water, sorry, two molecules of hydrogen produce two molecules of water vapor. Information about hydrogen is canceled, and the units I have left are milliliters, um, so, 75 times 2 divided by 2, we are just going to get 75 again. The only unit there is milliliters, and the piece of information we are talking about is water vapor. It is totally up to you which method you'd like to use. Um, I will show both. A catalytic converter in the exhaust system of a car uses oxygen to convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. If we assume constant temperature and pressure, what volume of oxygen is required to react with 125 liters of carbon monoxide? So we need to write a balanced chemical equation. Because there's constant temperature and pressure, the only thing changing is V1 to V2. We don't have an equation to do this. All right. So um, we are converting carbon monoxide with oxygen into carbon dioxide. To balance this, we need two carbon dioxides and two carbon monoxides. Each carbon monoxide gains one oxygen from our pair to become carbon dioxide. All right, let's write out what that ratio gives us. We get a two to one to two ratio from these guys. If we have 125 liters of carbon monoxide, we are looking for the volume of oxygen required. So to go from two to one, we divide by two. Therefore, we're going to do the same to our volume. So dividing by two, I get uh, 62 0.5 liters as my final answer. So this is based on mathematical ratios. And I talked a little bit about the mole ratio. So let's take a look at what that means. So we're going to do the same question again, but with a mole ratio. 
So what we do is we write out this same balanced equation. So we have our two CO2s and an oxygen gas making two CO2s. Oh, sorry, that was carbon monoxide that we start with here. All right, and I had a volume of 125 liters here. We are looking for the volume of oxygen. What I do is I start with my known value, so 125 liters, and that was of carbon monoxide. And I'm going to multiply by a fraction, and what I'm going to put in my fraction, I need to cancel the units of, or units, the compound of carbon monoxide. So I'm going to put whatever I need of carbon monoxide on the bottom here. And we're looking for some piece of information regarding oxygen. Now I know that two molecules of carbon monoxide um, can react with one molecule of oxygen. So what cancels here is our carbon monoxides. We go from liters of carbon monoxide to liters of oxygen with this. To uh, finish our math here, we do 125 times one divided by two, which is exactly the same thing as what we did up here. And we're gonna get 62.5 liters of oxygen. It's totally your preference what you'd like to use. Um, I can do both um, in our examples for you, no problem for it. Example two, what volume of nitrogen gas forms when 150 milliliters of ammonia decomposes into its elements? Um, let's change this to, um, I wanna find out about hydrogen gas. All right. Ammonia decomposing, ammonia's formula is NH3 and decomposes into elements, so we're gonna get nitrogen and hydrogen. These are both diatomics, so they get twos and they are gases based on our periodic table. To balance, I need two nitrogens, or sorry, two ammonias to give me the two nitrogens here. And uh, we're gonna need to make three hydrogens from that. So my ratio based on coefficients is two to one to three. Therefore, um, if I'm given 150 mils of ammonia and I'm looking for the volume of hydrogen gas, we have a two and a three ratio, which is a little bit tricky. So um, what I do is I'm gonna convert into the one ratio first here. All right, so two to one, I need to divide by two. So I'm gonna get 75 milliliters. This makes it easy because one is a beautiful number to work with with ratios. To get to my next ratio here, one to three, I need to multiply by three. So I'm gonna do the same thing to my volume. 75 times three is 225 mils. So um, again, it was tricky to go from two to three um, whether you needed to multiply by three over two or two over three um, can sometimes be confusing just looking at the ratios. So converting it to a one in between can be helpful. All right, how would you do this with mole ratios? So I'm gonna use our same balanced chemical equation and I'm gonna start with my 150 milliliters and this was specifically of NH3. I'm gonna multiply by a ratio where I'm putting NH3 on the bottom because I wanna cancel it. And I'm looking for some piece of information about hydrogen. In this case, it takes two molecules of nitrogen to make three molecules, or sorry, two molecules of ammonia to make three molecules of hydrogen gas. So when I was saying, do we multiply by three over two or two over three? The mole ratio can help to clarify that. We have to multiply by three over two. So to finish this question, we're gonna multiply our 150 milliliters by three and divide that value by two. We should get the exact same answer as we got above, 225 milliliters. And that is of oxygen, or sorry, hydrogen gas. Avogadro's law. 
My apologies if you had printed these notes earlier. Um, I had forgotten to add Avogadro's Law here. Um, I have just amended it um, so you can print that extra page if you would like. If not, it's just one example um, and you can write this at the very bottom of your page 13 in your notes. Equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. Okay, so if we have a balloon and it has this exact same volume of another balloon in the same condition, so maybe the same room, I can assume that they have the exact same number of molecules in them. I didn't count, so hopefully those are pretty much the same. I.e. to have the same number of collisions, there must be the same number of molecules or moles present. So it can be said that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. Avogadro's law, we use this formula. V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Again, this was temperature and pressure are constant or the same. Um, and so if I use my example of my balloon again, I have a balloon of volume one liter and I want to expand that exact same balloon to two liters um, without changing temperature or pressure, I actually have to add gas to it. Okay, so add gas molecules, which is moles. So a student had a balloon that contained 1.24 liters of helium when she added 0.65 moles of helium. So if the student added an additional 0.5 moles of gas, what it will be the volume of assuming constant pressure and volume, uh, temperature? Okay, so our initial volume and our initial number of moles, 1.24 liters, our initial number of moles is 0 0.65 moles. In the end, we're looking for V2 when we have added another 0 0.5 moles. So N2 is not 0 0.5. N2 is 0 0.65 moles plus 0 0.50 moles. We get 1.15 moles. All right, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Subbing in 1.24 liters all over 0 0.65 moles is equal to V2 over 1.15 moles. Cross multiply and divide and I get that V2 is equal to 2.194 liters. I have three significant digits, two significant digits, and two significant digits, so my final answer should be 2.2 liters. A little bit of homework here for you in 